we're going to go over the key components behind having an optimized bench press rep out and we're going to start right now What's up everybody, it's Dave Miller from GarageStrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in learning how to carry over that weight room strength to the field, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a champion. So the combine bench press rep out, these are tests that typically are only gonna be utilized for high school football, for collegiate football, guys that are gonna go to the NFL, but a lot of times they are utilize especially with high school football players who are starting to get recruited we want to see how strong is somebody's upper body and i think that once we think about what is this bench press rep out if it's a high school level we're going to be using 185 pounds if it's the collegiate level we're going to be using 225 pounds and these are pretty easy weights that we can achieve here at garage strength we've had high school kids rep 225 for well over 20 reps so it's pretty simple to see that college kids should be capable of bench pressing 225. High school kids should be capable of bench pressing 185 pounds for multiple reps. So what is it is we're gonna set up, we have three key points that we wanna focus on as far as pressure points. And we're gonna take that ball right off the rack and we wanna learn how to utilize our breathing effectively. We wanna learn how to utilize that range of motion as effectively as possible. And we wanna see what kind of grip do we have? What kind of focus do we have? How fast can we get through this test? And so what is needed is that we've got to have some structural integrity in the shoulders. We've got to be stable in the shoulders and we've got to have really strong triceps. We've got to have really strong pecs, shoulders. We also have to have good strength endurance. But how does this transfer over to the football field? A lot of coaches will say, that, well, it doesn't really transfer over, but I actually think it does. I think if we can think about it from the perspective of one, it's going to show you, have you been training? It's an easy test, okay? It's not hard. If you can't bench press 225 for 20 reps and you're 21, 22 years old, you haven't been training that hard. You haven't been training that well. Same thing if you're in high school, 185, 10 reps, easy. Okay, that should be easy. And if you can't do that, you haven't been training that well. But on top of that, once you get to 15, 20, 25 reps, now we can start to see how hard somebody can grind through. How much do they push themselves? How effective are they at making themselves get that last rep? It's gonna show us, hey, it's the fourth quarter. Are you gonna dig deep and really try and push yourself? Or are you just gonna peter out? So I think it does transfer over pretty effectively. It also shows us, hey, there's positions with offensive linemen, defensive linemen, there's tons and tons of pummeling. Same things if we got D-backs coming up on wide receivers, they get a little jab, they get a little push. Now all of a sudden that wide receiver gets knocked off of their route and they're in bad position. That is from the bench press. So it does carry over. Now think about Derrick Henry or somebody else throwing a nasty stiff arm. If you have really good trunk control, and really, really strong shoulders and pecs and triceps, well, guess what? That's from the bench press. Now you're throwing a nice stiff arm. So it's not the greatest exercise of all time, but it does have a transfer over to the football field. And now we're gonna head down and we're gonna show you exactly how to execute that bench press so that you can rep out 185 or 225 and hit an all time best. So the big things that we want to see with the combine bench rep out is right off the bat, we've got to establish a good foundation when we're getting on the bench. And so I like to cue is with Jan here is that he should actually be squeezing his scaps here, almost like he'd be hugging my hand. So when he would lay down, we want to see that scap retraction. And then I, I'll have those three points of contact will be here on the bench in his glutes, so I want to see him squeezing his butt cheeks together here, almost like he's trying to put a, a dime in between his butt cheeks, right? And that's going to create another, a nice shelf that will connect from his glutes into his scaps here. And then we want to grab the floor almost where those, the feet should be directly underneath the knees. So you'll feel the floor, and that's where we can think about those PVC pipe walks, grabbing the floor here, and then that pressure goes into the glutes, and then that pressure goes into the scaps here. We set those shoulders back and that's gonna help us establish that range of motion. We want our elbows then around 45 degrees while we're pressing. And the big thing is when we set up and as we're warming up, so actually let's go Jan here. He'll set his position, squeeze his glutes, sque retract his scaps. Okay, one, two, three. So those shoulders should be back and I even want him to think, fill his chest and hold that breath 
and that's going to help shorten the range of motion just slightly. Okay, so that so that as he's doing this warming up, he'll feel those points of, of pressure. He'll have that big chest filled with air. That's going to help shorten that range of motion. And then as we build into these sets, he's going to start to feel pretty good before we head into that rep out. I could even go through now, like on the side, like sort of like the steps, like the three steps of the rep out. <laughs> so a couple key factors is that we got to think about if we can build that bench to get bigger, let's build the bench, utilize the actual bench press to get your bench press bigger. So if we have somebody who tends to, to flare out, their shoulders are gonna be a little bit stronger because they're trying to transition a lot of that force to their shoulders so they have weak triceps. If we have somebody who pinches here, they've got weaker shoulders and their triceps are actually gonna be stronger. So what we can do then as a coach is sit there and say, all right, if let's just say hypothetically, Jan tends to flail his elbows out. Now we know that his triceps are a little bit weak. We already know his triceps are weak from some of the stuff we've done in the past on the dips. But that means that what we can do then is take those accessory movements and target his strength endurance with the accessory movements that's gonna fix his weakness. So that's what you've gotta do when you're training that combine prep stuff is that if we're analyzing, all right, 20, 25 reps, that's when we're starting to see him flare, flare out a little bit. We need to use those accessories to train that. And one other trick that I love is if you've ever done Wim Hof breathing or, or breath training, if you take three deep breaths, you do that three times. On the third one, hold it. Do as many push-ups as you possibly can to failure. Do that two to three times a week with the breath training. And now all of a sudden, when you get on the bench, that breath training is gonna help you execute phase one and phase two of the combine rep out a lot easier. So that's a little trick that you can utilize. You can do that on dips, you can do that on push-ups. It's gonna help oxygenate your muscles a little bit longer and that's gonna help you get more reps. Ready? All right, one, two, three. Tight and drive up, 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 up. Give me one more, one more, one more, more. Come on. Squeeze up fast, up fast, up, 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 up. Come on. Is that 19? That's not bad. Jam, we need you to get on the bench and establish your glute squeeze and your scap retraction. Let the bench know who's in charge. Don't let the bench ball you around. Hey, I'm in charge here. 30 seconds later, he was not. <laughs> I'm establishing dominance over you. <laughs> Come on. Get yeah, moving now. Come on. First, like 12, you smashed. It was like 15, 15 yeah, before he broke. And then it just died. Yeah. So I think that's pretty good, though. He had 21, and he had just done three sets of four over 315. So he had 315, uh, <laughs> 330, and then I think it was 350. Sam could probably get closer to 50 if he did this. So that means Jan is actually a coward. 
but still a pretty good effort. <laughs> yeah, that'd be sick. <laughs> Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> the sign of zero endurance. <laughs> One, two, three. That's good. He went too quick. That's still a little bad though. At least Jan doesn't bench press like a middle schooler anymore. So utilize those three points of contact, retract your scaps, squeeze your glutes, drive into the floor with your feet, and then make sure that you're going through those three phases. You've got big breath, as many as you can. The second phase, another big breath, as many as you can. And then that third phase is you're just going till you die. If you want help with this, if you want help for combine preparation, you want help with combine development, you can click on the link down below in the description and we can share with you all the benchmark lifts and cues that we utilize when we're trying to help our guys prep for combine training, prep for combines in high school or even at the collegiate level. Head over to GarageStrength.com, put in your email and that'll show up in your email inbox. If you want more videos about football training, you can click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace. Yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Show me the ball! Show me the ball!